Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic, and in this video I'm going to be discussing the science fiction book Red Mars, originally published in 1993 by Bantam Specter, written by Kim Stanley Robinson, and clocking in at 572 pages. In this video we'll be looking at the paperback edition. So this is my copy of Red Mars, and it's your standard paperback. Now this is an older edition that I bought at a used bookstore a while back uh, because when I originally picked up the trilogy of books, one of the, the, the first edition I had of Red Mars actually was a newer edition and the newer editions have different covers. And it's just a really simple graphic design and I really don't like those new covers. I think they're atrocious looking and I don't think they do a good job of selling what an epic sci-fi story this is, unlike this cover. Like you look at this cover, the design is amazing. The artwork on it just tells you you're going to get into a really epic story. This is going to be a real good ride. And that's why I like these covers. So I actually uh, gave that edition away, the first edition of Red Mars I had, and then I found this edition at a used bookstore. So now I have a trilogy of books that match. So as you can see, the artwork is just phenomenal on the cover. And I would love to have hardcovers of these. Even the artwork on the spine looks amazing. There's the back of the book. And we even get, uh, and it, it, you can see in the table of contents, it's divided up into parts. And each part is told from a different character's perspective, which is interesting. And then we even get a map. And I like when books have maps in them. Uh, I really like that. So that is my copy of Red Mars. In the year 2026, humanity has finally begun the colonization of Mars, sending the first 100 humans there in the spaceship Ares, led by John Boone, the first man on Mars, Frank Chalmers, Maya Totanov, and Arkady Bogdanov. They will be pioneers that will forge a new path for humanity on this unforgiving and dangerous world. Can they create a society better than what they left behind on Earth? For this may prove the greatest challenge of all. So this was the last book I read for 2022, and I got it just in under the wire. Now, as far as the plot goes, it's pretty straightforward. It's all about the first 100 humans going to Mars and starting the first human colony on Mars and all the challenges that comes with that. Uh, them having to survive on this very hostile planet, dealing with the harsh environment, and not only that, having to deal with each other as people, and on top of that, all the unexpected politics are, or politics that could be expected that come with starting a colony on Mars. And then you follow this process right from the very beginning. You follow them. They go there in their ship, set up the first colony, and now the story actually spans some decades. So you see this develop over uh, quite a few decades and see where it all leads to. So that's the basic plot of the book. So now there's going to be some mild spoilers in this review, but I'm not going to spoil any major things or anything like that, but there will be some mild spoilers in there because there are some things in this book that I do want to talk about. Now, this book is part of a trilogy and it was recommended to me way back in 2017 by a coworker. Uh, I was working with this guy and we both started talking and realized we had science fiction books in common. So we started asking each other, what stuff have you read? So he brought up the Mars Trilogy. He said, have you read the Mars Trilogy for, by Kim Stanley Robinson? I had, at that point, I've never even heard of it. And he said, oh, you have to read it. It's a fantastic uh, series of books. So Red Mars is the first book in a trilogy. And the other two books are Green Mars and Blue Mars. So when I found out about it, I went, found the trilogy at a bookstore, picked the trilogy up. But then it sat on the shelf for a few years. So finally, in 2022, I got around to reading the first book. So now I want to go into some of the things I liked and some of the things I didn't like about this book. Well, one of the things I liked about this book is in a lot of science fiction, like for example, The Expanse and Star Trek, Mars is already a fully realized colony. And we might get some background on how that colony started and what kind of trials there were getting that colony uh, started and becoming independent from Earth, if it's relevant to the story they're telling. 
If not, uh, we don't really get that. So Mars is already like an established thing. So it was cool to read a science fiction book that was all about starting a colony from scratch and seeing where that goes and following that over decades. I thought that was really cool and really interesting idea. And the other thing is I like about this this story is it, it's, it's a pretty hard sci-fi story. Like there's not very many over the top science fiction elements in it. So the world that you're in, this whole story feels very real and very believable. And because uh, it is a pretty hard sci-fi book uh, or a very hard sci-fi story, much like 2001 A Space Odyssey or even The Expanse, but it feels even more real than them because even in uh, 2001 you have the, uh, you know, the monolith that's almost like a magical technology and then in The Expanse you have that ancient alien technology and then you have the other non-corporeal aliens or life forms or whatever they are that humans have to deal with. There's nothing like that in Red Mars. It's all just very realistic technology you know, the, the author did a lot of research into this, so it's a very believable world. Now, the other thing that I really liked about this book was I really liked the way the characters were written. So we follow a few characters. We follow some of the, the, the hundred, as they're called, the first hundred colonists. We don't follow all of them, but we do follow like, uh, uh, like some of the more well-known ones and the more famous ones, the leaders of the group. And what I liked about this book, it's divided up into different parts. And each part, you follow a different character. So you get to see that, to see the world through that character's eyes. So depending on if you're following that character from their point of view, you get one perspective on that character. Then later on in the book, when you're reading from another character's point of view, you get to see how that character plus the other characters perceive that one that you just had finished reading. So depending on which perspective you're at. It kind of changes your perspective or your the way you view the character. So I thought it was really interesting and really well done. Now, the other thing I liked about this story was the politics in this book was very well done. And uh, what I liked about it is you have these people on Mars, they settle on Mars, but right away you have problems in the fact that there's no okay, we're setting up this colony, but there's no long-term plan of what are we going to do with Mars now that we're here? And this is where all the problems start. So you have a group of people who want to leave Mars alone, basically, and just leave it and preserve it as it is and study it as it is. And then you have another group, they want to terraform it and make it more habitable for humans. And then you have people that kind of fall in between, and then you have some other people that are siding with these big transnational uh, companies and uh, conglomerates and they just want to strip mine the shit out of Mars for everything they can and send it all back to Earth. What's interesting about this, you have like these ideological battles going on with these different characters and you can't help but side with one side or the other. You, you can't help it. So, for example, there's one character in the book, Anne. I have to be honest, I hated this character. I really did. Now, she was in the camp that we shouldn't tamper with Mars at all. Mars should be left as is, and we should just study it as is. Now, when I'm reading the book, I totally fell on the side of the people who wanted to terraform the planet. Because to me, that just made the most sense. Like, it didn't make any sense, to, okay, to study it, but the planet is dead. It's a dead planet. So what, you know, how much good, you're only going to get so much good out of that. But if you terraform it, then you're going to be giving humanity another place to live because obviously Earth is overpopulated and all that kind of stuff. So it, I just sided with the terraformers. To me, that just made more sense. And in the book, the reasons she gave for leaving it alone, like I didn't find she had very convincing arguments and they weren't very well thought out. And it just seemed like she was coming more from just emotional uh, sources than actual scientific ones. So as a character, she re I really didn't like Anne. But what's interesting is later on, towards the end of the book, you get to uh, read that, that part of the book is told from Anne's perspective. So you kind of get more into her head and see how she ticks. And when it did that, I kind of felt actually more sympathized with her more and then kind of felt sorry for her. Had some more sympathy, so my perception of the character kind of changed. So that, that, the way the characters are written from that uh, point of view is very, very interesting. So the politics, very, very well done. You have that. Now, what's uh, what the other thing is some of the political questions that are asked in this book. It's kind of interesting. So you have like the steam of these big corporations versus the working class. 
and you have all these different groups that have different ideas of what Mars should be for humanity and a lot all the tension comes from there. Now what's interesting is how immigration is viewed in this book. So you have a lot of the people on Mars that want to either slow down or stop the immigration of humans constantly coming from Earth to Mars. Because you have this one group that thinks Mars should be untouched. So they're totally against the immigration. Then you have other people who want to slow the immigration down because the infrastructure of Mars can't handle it. It's not it's not being built up fast enough to handle the amount of people that's coming in. Now these transnational corporations don't care because they're just sending workers there basically on the promise of a better life just so they can send them there and then strip mine Mars. But and when they get there like Mars doesn't even really have like a functioning government really and it doesn't have like a proper police uh, force or anything like that to, to watch over anything. So it's just these hodgepodge of these settlements being built and they're overcrowded and there's no organization. So it's not really working out and it's basically like a pressure cooker that eventually explodes um, this whole situation. But it was very, very interesting. So the immigrants on Earth that come to Mars, they're promised like a better life than what they left behind on Earth by these big organizations until they get they get there. Then they realize they're actually in a worse situation than they were before. Now they can't get back. They're stuck there. And on top of that, they are basically have the boot of these transnational organizations or these big companies on their necks and they can't really do anything about it. So very interesting stuff. Now on to some of the things I didn't like about the book. I have to be honest, I really had to think hard about this one because I really love this book. So there wasn't really anything I didn't like. If I had to say there was anything I didn't like about this book, maybe maybe the one thing would be this. is, And it's something that comes up in science fiction over and over and over and over and over again. And it's an idea that has been hammered into the ground into dust. And that's the idea that Earth will become a shithole in the near future because of climate change and overpopulation. And so this is like the, uh, this is an idea that was hammered home in The Expanse, and it's in this book, and it's in other books, even in comic books and stuff like that. So you hear about it a lot. And so maybe this wasn't, this, this idea wasn't hammered over so much back when this book was originally published, you know, 30 years ago, but since then it definitely has been. So it would be kind of interesting to read a science fiction book where the Earth turned into a shithole some other way besides climate change and overpopulation. But with that said, that was not a big major deal. That's if I had to find something, some fault with it, it would be that. If I had to stretch and find the fault. Now, with that being said, the way the Earth is described and the situation set up there, you have, you know, it's on the verge in this book. Earth is on the verge of collapse from climate change and overpopulation. Not only that, uh, the, these big transnational corporations, big mega corporations have tremendous power and you know they, they can run roughshod over other countries, over the UN. So the UN is basically like a toothless organization. And just the way everything is going, the politics of Mars, you know, you already have buzz, people buzzing about talking of being independent from Earth, being their own sovereign planet, things like that. So this feels like it could be a prequel to The Expanse. And it feels like this could, the way the technology and everything is, it could just seamlessly blend into that universe and act as a prequel uh, to The Expanse series. And I would say that I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the authors of The Expanse were big fans of this trilogy and read this trilogy and was inspired from it. Uh, I, if I had to bet money, they probably did. Uh, so there's that similarity there. So if you like the Expanse books, there's a good chance you would really like this uh, book as well. Now the other thing I would say that would act as a negative against this book or towards this book. Now it wasn't for me, but it might be for someone else. And that this book is not action heavy, this science fiction story. So you don't have like big space battles, and gun fights and fist fights and all that stuff. You don't have that going on in this book. You kind of have some of that towards the end. But for the most part, all the action in this book is political action and uh, or them what they have to do dealing with their the challenges of the environment. That's where all the action comes from in this book. So you have these different ideologies, political ideologies that are kind of battling it out throughout this book. 
as they're having to deal with all the environmental issues as well. Some people probably, depending on what you like in science fiction, might find that boring. I didn't. I thought it was very fascinating and uh, I thought it was you know, really well done. But just keep that just keep that in mind if you decide to read this book. It wasn't an issue for me, but it might be an issue for somebody else, depending on your tastes. So this book was very well done. I absolutely loved it. In my opinion, it's a must read if you're into science fiction books. I can't wait to go on to read the rest of the trilogy. It felt very real, this world. It was very grounded. It felt vast. It felt epic. I absolutely loved it. I can't wait to go on and read the rest of the trilogy. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.